way to talk about how do you handle getting off track and you know something is going to throw you off track and then how do you handle getting back on track after you get off track this is something obviously that Vida and I are dealing with very intimately <laughs> this week but how do you handle I know this is going to take me off track all of these things are happening like next week and I know that I can't possibly do my normal routine and it's gonna I'm gonna totally get thrown off and it's gonna be a mess. Oh my gosh, just that thought process causes a lot of anxiety, overwhelm, frustration, knowing that getting thrown off track is going to be horrible to try to get back on track, all of these things. So how do you handle that thought process? One, let it happen. I'm going to tell you, just let it happen. You know it's going to come. So do the things that you can, the best that you can to try to prepare for that. If you're a business owner, that means scheduling out all your social media content. So you don't have to worry about that. Do that. I always suggest that if you've got something that's going to throw you off track, like the summit, for instance, and it's going to throw you off track for at least a week, I suggest that you do something that you're is going to cover a month worth of content ahead of time. You know, almost always, you know, these things are coming. So I'm talking about something you know is coming right now. We'll talk about the interruptions and distractions, the major distractions that can throw you off track in a second. So if you know this is coming, you want to plan way ahead of time so that you're working inside of your inspiration energy. We all have our inspirational energy where we're at our max energy. And I call these our best days. We have good days things that are eh, our minimums, our better days where we could do a little more than a minimum. And then our awesome, amazing days. Those awesome, amazing days are what we want to capitalize on in planning ahead for something like this. So for me, for this summit, I mean, obviously I have a team, so I there were things I didn't have to worry about, but the things I did have to worry about, I planned a month ahead of time. I did them and I know where my energy week is. And that is always the week before my period. I'm high, high, high energy. So I planned for that week before my for that. And I did all kinds of stuff. I planned out, I scheduled emails. Yes, you can schedule emails. I scheduled content. I blocked off and tried to fit in as many of my clients and like shove them all in one week so that I could meet with them and get really well prepared ahead of the conference. So now I'm in, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted. My brain is not even like mush. It's concrete. Like yesterday was terrible. Thinking was horrible for me yesterday. So I didn't schedule a ton of stuff for yesterday. I had a few coaching calls. I did most everything. I scheduled things via chat yesterday. That was my main part of how I handled everything yesterday because via chat, I can process. I can read everything, take a minute to process and then respond. So I prepared for that and I have a whole entire week week of days like that to try to help get myself back on track. Do I have coaching calls? Absolutely. Because I have a full-time position where I take a ton of coaching calls. Those are my minimums. I knew that was coming. Those are my minimums. But anything that I could control in my personal business, I made sure that I was handling in a way that made sense for my brain. I prepared for that ahead of time. I also, for this week, I added lots of recovery points So what are recovery points for me? This looks different for everyone. This is what I need. I can only speak to what I need. I can help you figure out what you need. I'm good at that, but I'm just speaking to what I do. This may not work for you, but this is what I do. One, I make sure that I'm going to bed a little early every night. I don't stay up. I shut my electronics off an hour before bedtime. I read a book. Books make my eyes really, really tired. I'm dyslexic. So reading a book is, I don't want to say torture because I love to read, but then they're more exhausting for me. So I read a physical book and I read a book that is not exciting. So no sci-fi, no murder mysteries, anything like that. I'm usually reading a business, something that I'm learning for business because it's boring. I'm reading something boring. Sometimes I'll color in a coloring book because that tires my brain out. Those are the types of activities I do an hour before bedtime. I don't always do that. Sometimes I'm on my phone right up until bedtime and that's fine. But in a recovery week, I want to give my brain more downtime. So an hour before bedtime doing that. No TV, none of those things. Two, I'm making sure to take Epsom salt baths. Epsom salts helps relax me. It helps relax my muscles. It helps get rid of cortisol and just relax me and flush out all of the toxins in my body that I built up last week in the high energy, huge amounts of dopamine, cortisol, 
all of those things. I was running on empty all week. So did that. I take an Epsom salt bath every night. I read a book. I color to give myself time to relax. I hate baths, just so you know. So this is something I don't like doing, but it's good for my body. I take extra magnesium this whole entire week to help my body recover. Magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin C. I'm in recovery mode. So I'm taking things that I would take as if I had been sick because I made my body sick. Let's be very clear. When you're at those really, really mega high energy running off of dopamine and caffeine, all of that, you are making your body physically sick. So you need to do things to flush it out and get rid of all of that. That's what I worked on. That's what I'm working on all of this week. I'm also taking a midday break and taking a quick 20 to 30 minute nap. Taking that 20 to 30 minutes means I can be productive during throughout the day. So that's really important. I'm doing stretching once an hour. I'm doing five minutes of stretching and deep breathing. That helps keep my energy up and flush out all of frustration and overwhelm because I am clearly in overwhelm mode this week. All of these things help me in recovery mode because my body really, really needs this. Tomorrow is the monthly goal planning because it's our goal planning meeting tomorrow afternoon. So I'm very excited. So I have things that are necessities for me. So I do a lot to treat my body super well this week because it is so important to do that when you're in recovery mode because high energy recovery that is overwhelming and and all of those things. I mean, last week was amazing, guys. I loved every minute of it all the way up till the very end. So much fun, so much dopamine. It was amazing. But let's be clear, even doing something like that is depleting for your body. So this week I'm in building my body back up mode. If I don't do this in three weeks, I'll get struck with a major, major illness. It happens to me every single time. That's part of why people get so sick after going to, you hear a conference crud and things like that. It's part of why people get so sick. It's because they don't give their bodies the time to recover. So that's what this week is all about. So how do I get back on track? One, I knew this is recovery mode. So I kept things minimum, but I'm planning this week. Everything I do is planning for the following weeks. And I'm making sure that I am planning all of my planning is obtainable and actionable. I'm not overdoing it because believe it or not, overdoing it and trying to force myself back on track and trying to do all of the things will just delay full on crash. So by slowly working myself back up, I will get back on track. I never expect myself to get back on track immediately after some major thing. I don't care if it's illness, a death in my family, whatever. I never expect myself to get back on track because if I did, I'm setting myself up for failure. So how are you setting yourself up for success with obtainable action? Obtainable action. So start thinking about that and think of what your body needs for recovery mode. Those of you that hung out with us all week last week, that probably threw your whole entire week off track. How are you giving yourself time to recover and get back into your normal routine this week? I want to hear some of your recovery mode tactics below. Let me know how you recover. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day.